Hey y'all, welcome to the Sweet Chariot Travel Channel or welcome back. I'm Chanitha and I am a solo traveler. This channel is all about me sharing my experiences traveling to different cities, different countries as a solo traveler as well as me documenting my solo traveling journey. So this video is going to be about my overall experience in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia as a solo traveler. I am from the United States. US citizens are allowed to visit Malaysia for 90 days. I mainly spent those 90 days in Kuala Lumpur. Being in Kuala Lumpur is very nice because it was easy for me and convenient to create like a routine and I got a little too comfortable when I was there. So uh, when it came to my content, I really didn't record that much when I was there. It's crazy because I spent so much time there and I didn't record that much content. The only content that I have is from the tours that I went on. And so, yeah, I'm gonna just do better moving forward. And I'm gonna include some of those clips in this video. And I think it's so important to find like a balance between enjoying your trip as well as recording content. So yeah, I'm just gonna include those clips in this video. And like I said, just do better moving forward. I hope y'all enjoy this video and I hope you guys find it helpful, especially to those who are planning to solo travel to Malaysia. If you do, be sure to hit that like button, share the video and subscribe to the channel if you are interested in solo traveling or if you would like to follow my solo traveling journey. So let's get into this video. I'm looking at my notes. Starting with immigration. When I went through immigration, it was pretty easy. You do need to show up prepared, so you do need to have proof of your proof of your accommodations as well as an outbound ticket. It can be a flight, however you plan to get out of Malaysia. For my apartment, I booked my apartment on Airbnb and I booked it for a month. And then when it came to my ticket, I purchased my ticket 90 days out from when I was arriving to Kuala Lumpur. So actually knowing me, I probably booked it like 89 days away from when I was arriving to Kuala Lumpur. So they just wanna make sure that you are leaving the country. And if you show that ticket, they will most likely give you the 90 days. Um, and I'm just speaking for US citizens. I don't know about other nationalities. For my phone service, I chose Hotlink. And you'll see the Hotlink storefront when you leave out of the baggage and customs area. It'll be to your right. And also in that area, there are some places to go to the ATM. The currency in Malaysia is called Ringgit or Ringgits. If you are receiving money from someone, always, always, always check the bill to make sure that the quality of the bill is intact. Like make sure there are no tears, no slits, no tape on the bill because it will be very difficult for you to exchange that money with someone else. So even if a store gives you, someone, a cashier, gives you a bill that has a tear in it, let's say the next day if you were to go back and try to give them that same bill, they're not going to take it. But they'll give it to you if you accept it. But as far as like them receiving that bill, they're not going to take it. Most locals will not take bills that have any kind of deficiencies with that bill. So once I got my SIM card and I got some money out of the ATM, I was walking through the airport and I'm like, am I at a mall or an airport? It looks like a mall. There's a lot of restaurants there. There's actually a grocery store at the airport. I have never seen a grocery store at an airport. And mind you, this is outside of customs and baggage claim. It was impressive. I felt like I was truly at a mall and most Airports, yes, they do have restaurants and mini marts, but not to this level where it looks like a mall. It was nice. Dang, they got a grocery store up in here? They legit have a grocery store in here. That is crazy. Yeah, they got lingerie. Who needs lingerie at an airport? I guess if you get flown out. Wow. They got a noodle restaurant. Am I outside? This does not feel like I'm outside of the airport. This is cool. Okay, so pickup point. Um, 
yeah, I'm just gonna keep going this way. To leave the airport and make my way to the city, I decided to take a grab. And to take a grab, you have to go to the first floor. When you leave out of customs and the baggage claim area, that is the second floor. So once I went down to the first floor, I noticed that I did not have any phone service. And so I was not able to meet up with my grab driver. So I had to go back to the second floor. I went back to the Hotlink store. The customer service representative at the Hotlink store he said my phone was fine and it was like once I got back on the second floor. So from the second floor, I booked my grab, confirmed my ride as well, and then sent the information to a family member and then rushed. I had to rush down to the first floor so that I could meet up with my grab driver. It was, um, it was a little stressful, but I was able to do it. And there's a specific door that you have to go out of. I want to say it's door five, but I'm not sure. But there's a specific door that you have to go to to meet up with your grab driver. Also, before you leave the airport, make sure you get some change. Make sure you break down some of your bills that you receive from the ATM, especially if you are taking a grab. You do need to have exact change when you give money to your grab driver. Another popular way to leave the airport is by taking the train. The only way I would recommend taking the train is if you have like one backpack and your station that you're going to is right next to your hotel or apartment. For me, it did not benefit me to take the train because I have a suitcase, I have a backpack and I have a duffel bag. So maneuvering that through a train station and like switching stations with all of that is exhausting i have done it before in another city not in kl but i left from the airport to the city and i had to switch stations to get to my area it was exhausting so and then on top of that once i got to the station that was in my area i still had to call a grab to pick me up and take me to my hotel so in my opinion, especially if you have a suitcase, it's best to just take a grab from the airport to wherever your hotel or apartment is. And another thing with the grab, make sure that the address is correct. So you may have to manually type in the address because I put the address in and it gave me, it was the same street, but it was a different apartment. So luckily my grab driver, he was very patient and he made sure that I got to the correct address. And he even told me that some of the addresses in grab are still being updated. So he told me like while I was there to just make sure it says exactly the address that I need to, to go to according to Google Maps. So yeah, just make sure the addresses are correct that you put into grab. to the city I actually liked using the light rail system I only used the light rail system when I wasn't in a rush and I also had to plan ahead because some of the stations can get a little confusing but there are maps everywhere in the station um, you just have to pay attention and pay attention to the exits like know what side of the street that you need to be on before putting 
your plastic coin in the machine to exit the station. Like there's nothing worse than exiting exit C when you have a grab driver waiting for you at exit B on the opposite side of the road. And sometimes the best way or the only way to cross the street is to go through the station. So yeah. And they also have people at the station to assist you if you do need some assistance, some guidance. Okay. But they have maps everywhere. The traffic in Kuala Lumpur wasn't too bad or chaotic. It had a nice flow to it, but don't underestimate it. During rush hours, it can get a little backed up, so make sure you plan ahead, especially if you have to be somewhere at a specific time. When it comes to visiting a new city, the hardest part for me is deciding like what area to stay in. So I stayed in three different areas. I stayed, the first place I stayed in was in the Bukit Benthang area. I hope I'm saying that right, Bukit Benthang area. That's a great area for short stays. It's near the tourist attractions, it's very walkable. The place that I stayed in, it wasn't near the train station, but it was walkable. I would say that's a great area to stay in, even as a solo traveler. This area is nice. Like I wouldn't mind walking in this area at all. <laughs> this looks like a park. My tour guide, her name was Umi, and she was telling me that it rains pretty much every day. So Kuala Lumpur is a, a rainy city. And when it does rain, it's like for just a couple of hours, maybe just, it only rained one hour today. Should have ran across. Okay. So yeah, the walk wasn't bad. It was like it's 12 minutes to my apartment. Oh, I see the Shell gas station. So my apartment should be very close. There is my apartment. So yeah, I could actually do this again. Like walk from Chinatown to my apartment. It was 12 minutes. It wasn't far at all. So the second area was my favorite area and that was in Mid Valley. I love staying, I don't know why, I was just very comfortable in Mid Valley. I think that it had a lot to do with the apartment that I was staying in. I don't have any apartments to recommend to you guys because all of my apartments, there was something wrong with them. And the thing with Airbnb is that Airbnb wants you to work it out with your host. And so, yeah, I don't have an apartment that I would recommend. Yeah. So the one in Mid Valley was nicer than the other ones that I stayed in. The one in Mid Valley had like a food court at the bottom floor. It had a mini mart in the food court as well. And then it had a fitness center, it had an infinity pool. It was a luxury apartment. It was so nice. And it had like a beautiful like view of the city. It was so nice. I didn't take any pictures of it, you guys. So I have locked myself out of my apartment. I messaged my Airbnb host. I'm just happy that I have my phone with me. Like if I didn't have my phone, like what would I have done? I don't even know what I would have done. I would have had to like yell across the street and hope so that somebody could hear me. And then what, like? I have no pictures, no videos of it. I mean, a little bit, a little bit of like the skyline. Mm, I didn't record any content. Yeah, I was real comfortable in KL. I felt like I was actually living there. And then I was going to the Mid Valley Mall to like do my grocery shopping. That's the thing about KL too. Like they don't have grocery stores. They go to the mall to go grocery shopping. Um, they do have some markets like the child kit market. That's one. To buy groceries, most people go to the mall and go to the bottom floor to buy their groceries. So that took some getting used to. Also, the Mid Valley Mall is huge. All of their malls are very huge. But yeah, the Mid Valley Mall, 
you have the Mid Valley Mall and then you also have the Gardens Mall as well. Like I kept getting lost in there, but yeah. Anyway, the last area was the Mount Kara area and that one was more of a local area. It was still cool to stay in, but it was very far away from the tourist attractions like the city center and the different malls. So if you're planning to go there to like sightsee and to go on different tours, that is not a good area to stay in because you will have to plan like, I want to say like 40 minutes, probably longer than that ahead of time to go to the city for tours. So it's just not a good area to stay in. But it kind of reminds me of the suburbs when I was staying out there. It's more of a local type of area. So safety, did I feel safe in Kuala Lumpur? Overall, I'll say yes. But for all of my fellow solo traveling women out there, beware of love romance scammers and gigolos. Unless you're into hookup culture and you want to hire a gigolo, which I don't even know if that's legal to do in Kuala Lumpur, but they're out there. They are out there. And I know that love romance scammers and gigolos are all over the world. I didn't even know it was a thing until I went to Kuala Lumpur. So I know that they are all over the world, but when I was in Kuala Lumpur, I kept meeting men that had the same exact story. So they were immigrants to Malaysia. These men, they were not Malay, they were not Indians, they were not Chinese Malaysians. They were immigrants to Malaysia and they were there on a student visa Two were getting their master's degree, one was getting his doctorate's degree. Their time was very flexible, they were very charming, they were wearing like business attire or casual business attire. Um, what else? They will ask you, one of the, the things that they will ask you is like, uh, where are you from? Are you alone? The first two men, I told them that I was here with my friend. My friend was back in her room and she's sick. And I was like, yeah, I'm just out and about, you know, while my friend is recovering. The third guy, he was not attractive. And so with him, I was like, yeah, I'm traveling with my boyfriend. He's back in the room. That man still did not care. Like he, he did not care. He still was trying to talk to me. And then as far as my encounter with the gigolo, it wasn't like he directly said that he wanted to provide me a service. It started out as friendly and very attentive and then it led to him being a little sexual and then he ended up just straight up asking me i think because i was being a little <laughs> i don't know ditzy i don't know what i was doing he ended up straight up asking me if i could sponsor him in europe even though i told him i was from the united states because i was just you know i was just you know keeping it light and yeah he had to make his intentions very clear but even after that, I was just like, oh, okay. But once I met the other three men, this was a separate man, right? So in total, it was four men that just was more on a scammer type of vibe or just, mm. the gigolo is not so much as a, of a scam because if you agree to that man's service, then it's like you both get something out of it. Um, but it was definitely something that I had never experienced before. Like a man asking me to sponsor him or like give him money like I was appalled like I was I thought it was a joke because I was still kind of keeping it lighthearted. but he was so serious and I was like oh wow like he's serious it was just weird it was very very weird so yeah watch out for love romance scammers and gigolos I'm actually gonna make a separate video about those encounters because I learned so much about that like I said I actually felt bad and those encounters really taught me a lot about emotional manipulation tactics by scammers like you'll experience that with people trying to scam you at the markets as well as love romance scammers but yeah like I learned a lot from that experience so I'll be making a separate video not today another day because <laughs> the sun is going down so I'll make that another time but it won't be a long break before I, I make that next video. So let's get on to the next thing. So some things I did not like about Kuala Lumpur was that sometimes when you're walking around, you'll see trash on the streets or sometimes you'll see homeless people on the sidewalk sleeping. So that is something to be mindful of. But it is very walkable. I did not walk around at night in Kuala Lumpur. What else? Also, the water is hard. When I would get out the shower, I would notice like a white residue on my skin. It was also drying up my skin, drying up my hair. I didn't use the water on my face. I didn't brush my teeth with the water. 
Um, so I had to use bottled water on my hair, my face, and when I was brushing my teeth. I still used the water on my body and I made sure that I was moisturizing my skin. So you will need some lotion or, you know, if you use shea butter, that's also really good to have when you go to, um, when you visit Kuala Lumpur. It is very hot and humid. It does rain a lot. So make sure you take an umbrella and also take one of these, like I have a microfiber towel. I have like this type of towel. It's like a, it's a cooling towel. It's a microfiber towel, like this. That helps a lot. Take an umbrella, you might need a poncho, you'll need some sunscreen, if you wear sunscreen. I kinda don't wear sunscreen. Um, wear loose fitted clothing as well. Take a hat with you. Um, what else? Yeah, just know it's hot and humid. It is hot and humid. The official language in Malaysia is Malay. I really didn't have to use Google Translate that much when I was in Kuala Lumpur because most people do speak English, so that was amazing. That was amazing. I did have to use it like once or twice, but when I did have to use Google Translate, it was for Malay and Chinese because there are Chinese uh, Malaysians there. And I would say that Kuala Lumpur is mainly like a Muslim or like Islamic type of city you'll see a lot of women in the hijabs and like wearing um the muslim clothing and you'll hear the call to prayer over the intercom in the city as well y'all i did not know that there were chinese people who were muslims specifically chinese like i've been to different other parts of southeast asia but before i came here i just thought that it was mainly like buddhism hinduism here in asia i didn't think that there were so many muslims especially in China. Like I've always seen China as like a Buddhist or like Christian type of country. But no, there are Muslims in China. And it started during the uh, Silk Road. So when there was a lot of uh, trade and the merchants coming through, they brought their religions as well. to Kuala Lumpur and you want to go to the tourist attractions by yourself I would say that it's pretty safe to go to the tourist attractions by yourself like looking back I would have been fine going to the Batu Caves by myself because to go to the Batu Caves you have to take the train and then you just follow the crowd to the Batu Caves you go up the stairs you explore a little bit and then you take the train to go back to the city the Petaling Jaya street market wasn't too chaotic I would say that's the safest street market chinatown that i have been to especially if you go during the daytime the thayan hao temple was also very easy to visit i took a grab to get there and no i did not go inside of the Petronas towers so don't come for me y'all i did not go inside my main goal when i was there was to take a picture with the tower so i didn't actually go inside maybe i'll do that another time that is none other than a Petronas twin towers tallest buildings in the world from 1996 to 2004 and then type in 101 took over and we hate Taiwan since then but still <laughs> yeah sadly but still we are the tallest twin tower structure in the world to this day and let me give you some numbers right 453 meters 88 floors you do want to take a picture with the Petronas towers I would highly recommend going to the, like, it's called the Link Bridge. It's called something else. I know it as the Link Bridge. But it's a colorful bridge that lights up, you know, at night. Very beautiful. And there are men on the bridge who will, you know, ask if you want your picture taken. For two photos, I paid 10 ringgits and they sent the photos to my WhatsApp. So take the men up on their offer. If someone gives you a high price, like, for one photo, 10 ringgits, just go ask around to other people. Even when you're at the Jaya market, at the Chinatown market, definitely make sure you ask around and negotiate for different things that you wanna buy. Don't be afraid to negotiate. And also just be mindful that the stuff that you buy may not be like of good quality. Like I bought some New Balances 
And once I got back to the room, I looked at the back and I was just like, <laughs> I could have kept these like at the place because also the quality just, it wasn't the best quality for the shoes that I got. Look at these shoes. All right, I've only worn these once and I already know that they're gonna be a problem. Like, let me show you. Look at that. Look at that. I shouldn't have bought these shoes. And look what it say on the back. <laughs> I shouldn't have bought these shoes. I really shouldn't have bought these shoes. So it is what it is. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to leave them here. You can see the glue. Yeah, it is what it is. Overall, I had a great experience in Kuala Lumpur. I could definitely see myself going back. The locals were very kind. And I'm saying like the Malaysians, the um, Chinese Malaysians, the Indian Malaysians, the ones that I interacted with, they were all very kind. I was also surprised to see dark-skinned Indians. I, Coming from the States, you don't see dark-skinned Indians. You see people who are like my color and lighter. So seeing dark-skinned Indians was a huge shock to me. I wanted to like stop and be like, hey, can I get a picture with you? Like that's how amazed I was because yeah, you really don't see dark-skinned Indians in the United States. You don't like the representation of Indians like that I know of coming from the States is not dark skinned Indians. So I was amazed and like they'll have like dark skin with like this silky black hair. Absolutely beautiful. Seven, seven floors. Uh, they have a Toys R Us. Yeah, never lose women. As an American, this is very impressive because we don't use our malls in the states anymore. They closed down the malls. I don't know what the plan is with the government for our malls, but uh, yeah, most of the malls in the states we don't use and they're abandoned. It's really sad, actually. This looks like the food court area. Since I'm already compiling my trip to Kuala Lumpur in this one video, I also want to share the best eyelash extension salon that I've ever been to. It was clean and they were very gentle. In this next clip, my eyes are red and it's not from any fumes or the lashes poking me in the eye. It's because I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep every single time and they also give you a free consultation to like match the eyelashes with your eyes so yeah that is the end of this video of my overall experience in Kuala Lumpur along with some clips from my visit to Kuala Lumpur I hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you have be sure to hit that like button share the video and subscribe to the channel if you are interested in solo traveling or if you would like to follow my solo traveling journey until next time bye